That's it. Go that way. Go that way. It's over there. Turn right. Turn right, mate. No, that's left. Hello, it's Mike coming at you with another Planet Coaster Park Spotlight. Thank you for joining me. Welcome to the video. And welcome to Guinevere Castle, created by B750. Now, today's park was created on a PlayStation 5. And as always, if you do enjoy this video, please make sure to leave a like. Leave a subscribe if you are new. And if you would like to have your park spotlighted, then the Iron Gamers Discord link, the Iron Gamers, will be up in that top corner right now. Now the description reads, After Guinevere and Lancelot deceived and killed King Arthur, they pursued a myth about the Valley of God, a valley where all life started and gives eternal life. Lancelot even built a castle in the area where the valley should be. Nobody ever found the valley. Now the castle is a sad reminder of two people who dedicated their life to a myth. There are 26 arrows with 26 bugs that guide you through the castle. Wow, really nice description, proper setting up the scene. Really excited to get into this park. It's multi-layered. There's a lot to look at in this spotlight. So without further ado, let's hop in and have a look around, shall we? Right, so here we are in the park. Now, I haven't actually started at the park entrance, which is back down there. And that is for one very big reason. This park crashes so, so much. It's like being in Black Citadel all over again. And very unusually, this video is pre-recorded for a PlayStation park, which I don't think I've ever had to do before. It took me almost all day to film this spotlight purely because of the amount of crashing. Whilst filming this spotlight, it crashed on me eight, nine times, maybe even more, which is why you won't see any guests in this park. Now, I believe the reason for the crashing is because of how complex and how multi-layered this park is. It's got about three different layers to it all going underground, and there's a lot of glass. So not only have you got that different elevation of the multi-layers, but also the reflections of the glass. And I think that is where the issue has arose. But as we come through here, look at this cathedral right in front of us. I mean, I know that the description said that the castle was abandoned. So by having no guests in, it almost adds to that, in my opinion. Having no guests in this park almost goes hand in hand with the actual story of the park itself but we've got a ride straight away here to our right so we'll have a walk up this queue line right here i love this design all around here looks fantastic perfect choice of time of day it's set to 5 p.m so you've got that nice subtle ambient shadows being cast everywhere all the lights are on and then as we come up here into the building we've got a great queue line and as we carry on around, we've got a court jester right in front of us. And we come round to our first coaster of the park. So we've got a Vacoma suspended coaster. And if you look closely, you will actually notice there is another coaster right on top of it. And then above us again is yet another coaster. We've got three coasters all going through this one building. Just as this one comes past us here, look. That is awesome. But we've got our very first ride of the park. I love this station. We've got the King's Diner. So you've got all the table all set up. Love how this is all set out. So first ride of the park. Let's do it. Enjoy everyone.
I think that was a fantastic first ride of the park. Let's not pretend, shall we, that that was supposed to be realistic. This hasn't gone for realism. So maybe the little bits of janky areas, they can be forgiven. It's not supposed to be an ultra-realistic ride. It's supposed to be an experience coaster going through all the set pieces. And it was brilliant. I'm here for it all day. Absolutely fantastic. Great first ride of the park. Really nice introduction for everything else that we've got ongoing especially the way that it goes all down below so we've even had teases already of what we've got upcoming in this park but we'll walk down this exit past this uh, sad little janitor there so now that you have seen the king's diner you can explore the cathedral so we'll come out of here and we'll turn left and we'll go straight into the cathedral so we've got arrows on the floor just helping us with the direction of this park which is really nice i do like that if everybody wants to do that in their parks moving forward, greatly appreciated. Just arrows on the floor showing me where to go. Makes it so much easier on my part. Now, as we come through into here, and look at this. This is awesome. Now, you may notice on the floor in this park, you will see the curbs throughout the entire park. And you may be wondering, oh my, why are you not telling him to remove the curbs? It's for a very big reason. Because of the amount of terrain work that has gone on in this park, all of the paths that you're seeing right now are not actually on the ground because there's layers underneath them, which is why the path curbs are there. It's a little bit unfortunate. It's a shame that you can't hide them curb paths if you have got the paths elevated, but it's just the way it is. So it can be forgiven for that. I just saw a little spider back up there. So we've got a hidden passage just on there. We'll go and have a look at that in a second. So we've got all these cells just around here. We've got all the skeletons just inside. And then if we have a look down here. And we have the resting place of Lancelot. I love this in here. It's really atmospheric. Proper feels like a crypt down here. Really ambient. Yeah, great job. We've got a path that goes off just to our left there. But I don't want to go down that just at the moment. I'm going to come back to that in a second. I want to go and have a look at that hidden passage first. So we'll come back through here again. Look at the amount of arches. Is it any wonder this park crashes? No wonder with how much is going on below the ground level. Crazy. But we'll come back through here and let's have a look at this hidden passage, shall we? So we've got a queue line just to the right and there's the exit. So let's have a look down this queue line, shall we? Hello. He was greeting me. Right, down the stairs. Awesome camera skills incoming. And let's head down to our second coaster of the park. Look at this. How cool is that? Just the lighting is sensational. Wow. Right, so we've got our second coaster of the park. Enjoy. Great use of trigger work all the way around that ride. Again, very much like the first coaster, it hasn't gone for that realism. There may have been a couple of little bits that were a little bit janky here and there, maybe a little bit of smoothing, but again, it's not supposed to be realistic, so it can be forgiven. And look at this for a shot. Wow. 
There's so much going on down there. We're going to have to go down and have a look in a second. Again, I'm pretending that I haven't pre-recorded this video. Spoiler alert, I do go down there and have a look in a moment. I don't know why I do it. Whenever I pre-record a video, I always pretend like I don't know what's happening. Despite the fact that I know full well what's happening because I'm the one who's already recorded it. But anyway, let's come back up the exit back up here. And then we'll head down that path over the other side. So we'll come back through here and we'll head back towards the... Is it like a catacombs or something? It appears to be. It's like the resting place of Lancelot, isn't it? So back through here again. Past Lancelot. And let's have a walk down this path down here. And this is where we'll really start exploring the subterranean level of this park. I wasn't joking, was I, when I said there was a lot to look at in this park. There's a lot more than meets the eye when you very first load up the park. If you can load it up without crashing, that is. So you can see the train line down there. You can see the Vacoma suspended coaster just going past down there. Or at least the track, should I say. And let's carry on going down towards the train station. So we've got a couple of shops down here. Given the fact that you haven't got guests in this park, and it just won't work without the guests, I wonder how much of the pathing you might be able to delete. Because you've actually covered a lot of the pathing in the park already. And if it's not going to have guests in it, then I think maybe there's might be certain points of the park where the path could just be deleted certainly maybe not parts like this where it's actually specifically going down but certainly that top level maybe that pathing could be deleted potentially it might help with the crashing a little bit and look at all that over there it looks so good oh just as the coaster went past we'll come over this bridge don't look down don't look down oh there's the train over there Right, let's start heading towards that, shall we? So we've got is what must be the train station just to our left there. I'm kind of like getting a little bit of Midgar vibes from Final Fantasy VII. I don't know if I'm alone in that. It does feel a little bit like Midgar. Oh, that is so cool. That looks fantastic. We'll come back to that in a second. I just want to explore over to the right a second just before we hop on that train. So the Valley of God. So of course that is the in the description what Lancelot and Guinevere were searching for. And we can actually walk down here underneath the coaster. Let's hope it doesn't come up because it's going to kick. We're going to get a kick in the head if we do. And you've done all of this street down here. And you whiz past it so fast when you're on the coaster, you can barely take any of this in. Is there anything inside here? Nope, nothing in there. Right, retreat. This is awesome. You've got the giant waterfall off in the distance over there. I really like the way that the coaster wraps around the terrain, just to the right. A lot of thought has gone into this. A lot of imagination has gone into this. It's very unique. Oh, there goes the coaster. Yeah, absolutely fantastic. I love this. I love the creativeness of it. Just the thought that's gone into this. But we'll start heading back towards the train again. And this isn't even 100%. And yet it still crashes. A lot. <laughs> it's only 80% on a PlayStation 5. But I don't believe you could actually build anymore due to the amount of crashing that was happening. We got a lot of glass down here, look. So that's a lot more reflective surfaces. Which will also contribute to the crashing. 
for that let's have a walk down here and start heading towards the train shall we right so let's hop on and go for a ride shall we enjoy That train POV didn't really show a lot. It wasn't the normal train that I go on in a spotlight. Normally, whenever I go on a train in a spotlight, it's got the front facing seats so you can see everything that's going on around, but you must have used the other type of train. So I could only see from side to side. So for that reason, let's go for a quick explore and have a look around because what I did see looked amazing. Oh my God, look at this. Look at the amount of glass that is below the ground. Again, that will be part of the reason it's crashing. Oh, I love the bridge. And the train goes right through the waterfall. I can't believe how much detail that is below ground. You've got all the smoke effects. The more I see of this park, the more I understand why it crashes. You can even see the frame rate stuttering a little bit there. I did have it crash on me the once as I was filming. And you come into a underground station underneath the water. Again, lots of glass being used. 
and if we hop out of the exit right here this will actually take you to the entrance of the park now i had to try and do this bit about three times again because it kept crashing on me because you've got all the glass coming up the side here look so many reflective surfaces in this park so start at the other station please which is what we did and that would be the entrance tunnel just over there and then just through that um gate what you could see right there through the portcullis that's where we started the spotlight so we'll work our way back down towards the station again and we'll carry on along the track we've got a shark right behind us right let's hop back on the track again shall we Oh, this is so cool. This is awesome. And then we come through to what is probably my favourite bit of the train ride. It looks like something out of Lord of the Rings. I'm getting lots of different vibes from this park. I've already said Midgar, but I'm also kind of getting this little sense of Lord of the Rings. Like something like Dungeons and Dragons, like Baldur's Gate or something like that. I mean, this looks like the Mines of Moria or something from Lord of the Rings. Especially with the lighting. And then as we come through, I believe this takes us back round to the station again. Yeah, this is fantastic under here. It can't have been easy to have done all of this underground. I wonder how you did approach it. Did you drop all of the terrain do all the work down here and then terrain back over the top again or did you actually build this underground as you were doing it because that would have been insanely difficult to have done and got a crocodile just in there and back through to the station once again yeah absolutely brilliant love that so let's start heading back up again so i believe that's most of downstairs done or at least underground should i say and i think we can start heading back towards the surface level again so up them stairs goes to a dead end i did check so we'll come back over the bridge again underneath the vacoma and we'll come back up this path and start heading towards the surface so much work has gone into down here Again, it can't have been a quick or easy endeavour to have done all of this below the ground. So, yeah, super impressive. Really well done. Love that. So, right, go on. Up, 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 up we go. Out we go. We need some daylight. I'm getting a little bit claustrophobic down here. There we go. Right, back in the catacombs again. Uh, which way do we go? This way. There we go. And then through here, and then whereabouts are we? Oh, there we go. Just to the left there. Right, and this will bring us back into the cathedral again. Right, so out we go, and we'll start exploring the actual town itself. So let's go right, shall we? What's really impressing me in this park is how you've been able to nail that medieval aesthetic. Everything feels very old, very... is vintage the right word? Probably not. Very old and medieval. I'll say that. There we go. So we've got some seating just through here. Up the stairs. And yet it's still got that theme park feel to it with all the attractions and all the shops and all the rides of course we've got a little banquet hall just inside here we've even got the music just there and out we come I'm just engrossed in this what's down here so I think this takes us to the ship. Yes, it does indeed. So follow the others. There's another spider on the wall there.
Yeah, the choice of time of day was perfect for this park. I think it really adds a different element to the park. I'm not sure it would have had that same vibe if you'd done it in the middle of the day, like 2pm or something. We've got a Swift Drifters just inside here. We'll have a quick look inside there. Nice use of the ropes. The rope fence piece just on the top there, just adding a different layer, just to break up that monotonous uh, stone texture that would have been on the roof. Of course, you've got the big ship that's anchored at the moment. And then just over here, just some more detailing around here. You've got the all the clutter just to the left here, what it looks like has been taken off the ship or being put on the ship, one of the two. And then you've got a staff room down the bottom and even more food and drink. Once again, a toilet block down there, some seating areas. And the arrow is pointing us back this way again. So back we go. And I believe we've still got two more coasters left to go on still. So we've got a Gertschlauer Eurofighter and a PTC wooden coaster still left to go on. So we'll turn left here. I love these lights in Planet Coaster. They're probably my favourite lights in the game. And what else have we got? So we've got a chair plane to our left, I believe. Yeah, no, sorry, chair plane just inside there. In this big open courtyard. It, it does have a bit of a strange feel to this park without the guests in. As I said, I know it kind of like adds to the story of having no guests in and it being an abandoned park. But it really does give it a different vibe, a different atmosphere with no guests in here. It's quite... Oh, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Like, I was going to say reclusive, but that's not really the right word. Quite foreboding, quite ominous. So we'll have a walk down here, which I did originally think this was the queue line for the chair plane, but it's not. I'm really glad I did walk down this queue line because it's actually for another coaster. So as we come through here, and we've got the library. Another sensational station. Love this. And we've got a Gertschlauer Eurofighter. So, penultimate ride of the park. Let's go for a ride. Enjoy. That was another really fun ride again just taking you around the park letting you take in all of the sights and the sounds and the scenes of the park it feels like every coaster in the park is its own different experience like each coaster has been placed for a specific reason and to show off different aspects of the park and i think that one again just really nailed what it was that you were trying to achieve yeah great job really enjoyed that 
so we'll come through into the graveyard so what's just to the left here so this is just a alternate exit for the coaster that we've just looked at great use of architectural style in this park all the castle just using different types of textures throughout the park not using all the same castle pieces throughout there's a couple of different styles that have been used to bring it all together but we come through into the graveyard which will be home to the final coaster of the park now i did walk past the entrance a couple of times here the entrance is right there to the right but for some unknown reason matty over here couldn't find it so we've got the exit just there i thought i was following the path correct clearly i wasn't so, retreat turn around go back and here is now me panicking because i can't find the entrance it's right behind me we've got arrows on the floor here which will lead us to another food area again so many places to sit and eat lots of food lots of drink in this park it is a fully functioning park if it did have guests in it mad camera skills once again and we've got another food court just up here i think this might be my favorite one just because it's got the coaster looping right through the center i really like the use of the lighting up here it gives some great views just looking over that balcony we've got a staff room and a toilet block just up here using some doors over them just to hide the entrances I even like the wooden beams just going across the top. Well, as we come down these stairs, and we'll head over towards the final coaster of the park. There we go. Come on, mate. Come on, mate. Right. That's it. Go that way. Go that way. It's over there. Turn right. Turn right, mate. No, that's left. Yeah, you can tell at this point, even from watching me as I'm moving around, I'm just lost at this point. I knew there was a coaster here, I just couldn't find it. So that will take us back to the main street where we were at the start of the spotlight, where the bumper cars were. So, back in here. However, I missed it. I will never know. It's quite obvious. Turn left. Turn left. There you go. Light bulb moment. Right, so we have Grave Mountain. The final coaster of the park. So it is a PTC wooden coaster. So let's have a walk down this queue line underneath the wooden beams and into the station really nice wooden feel to the station for a woody final ride of the park let's do it enjoy everyone
that was my favorite ride of the entire park i think we saved the best one till the end it could have maybe done with a little bit of smoothing just here and there but for just authenticity and layout and just the ride experience as a whole i think that was my favorite one of the entire park i love the way that it works up that mountain and then back down again over the bridge I think it gave a really nice sight line of the entire park. Yeah, really, really nice ride and a great way to end this spotlight. And despite how hard this park has been to film, and despite the fact that it's taken all day, I've really enjoyed this park. It's a shame that you did have the crashing towards when you reach the end of the park and you may not have been able to fully finish the park how you'd envisioned it just because of the amount of crashing that was going on. But despite that, I think it was a really nice park. It had a lot to offer. And yeah, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed this park. What did you all think of this one? Did you all enjoy this park? You're going to have to let me know down below in the comments. But until next time, I'll be back in another couple of days for another Planet Coaster Spotlight. I will see you all then. Take care, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I will see you all soon for another Planet Coaster Spotlight. Bye, everybody! Thank you.